Hello again, minions. It's Wheezy, free of my tripod. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about an update to bypassing HDCP 2.2. I did a video uh, about this before. This is going to be an update to that. So I'm going to tell you something that I found about my particular capture card that simplifies the system and refer you back to the original video in case your setup doesn't work with this simplified system. So let's go and talk about it. All right, so let's jump right into the simplified system. I have an internal capture card in my computer now. You guys may have seen that from one of my last update videos a while back, um, but it is the Elgato HD60 Pro Mark II. <laughs> um, I used to use the uh, uh, Avermedia Live Game Reportable 2 Plus which has a 4K pass-through but only captured in up to 1080p. Um, my 4K Elgato now allows me to capture in up to 4K, although my GPU doesn't really have enough beef to do that, so I tend to capture in 1440p. Doesn't matter. The point is, I have found a simplified system to bypass HDCP for the Elgato that, spoiler alert, does not work for the Aver Media. So what I would suggest <laughs> If you're trying to get this set up and you're not sure if it's going to work for your particular setup, follow this simplified setup first because it's a subset of the larger setup that I covered before. And if these two components don't bypass HDCP for you, then add the other two components from the other video and I'll show you all of that as we go um, to fully bypass HDCP. So first, let me show you what my current setup is doing. Okay, so right now I have my capture in OBS Studio and the PlayStation 5 is on here and under system you will see that under HDMI I do in fact have HDCP on. Now with this setup if I were using the Aver Media then we would still get a signal on this screen on the pass through but this would say copy protected content on it. As you can see here that is not the case and just for the sake of completeness, let me fire up the Series X as well. And I have this through my handy dandy switch, which is also going through my HDMI splitter. Uh, well, not splitter, sorry, my KVM switch, um, which I am loving that thing. So here's that. And how do we test on the Xbox if HDCP is on? Because it only turns on when it's absolutely needed. Uh, the easiest way is to fire up Netflix because Netflix definitely turns on HDCP. So here you can see, we got our capture device, Netflix screen. All right, so as you can see, HDCP is active and we are still running. So what is the setup? If we go over here, uh, I'll talk about these old components that we don't need right now, but here is the setup this new setup. So this is, let me see, I got the boxes here. I got this splitter, or this switch rather, this switch suggested by someone who watched my other HDCP video. Um, and he recommended, he's like, hey, I only use these two components and it works fine for me. I tested his setup. It's not true. <laughs> it didn't work. Um, but I accidentally discovered because of this magic box um, that I actually enjoy this switch better, even though it doesn't have any more or better functionality really than the one I did in my other video. But I like this one better. It seems more reliable whenever the video, uh, whenever I'm switching resolutions, especially between like the PS4, because this doesn't output in 4K, um, that can cause this, the, this entire setup to get confused. With this switch, I turn it off, I turn it back on, easy peasy. But it's a two component setup. This switch, which honestly, this is, you only need if you're hooking up multiple components to it, right? If you don't, if you only have one component, you really only need this. And it is the magical AV access splitter. Now what this, the magic sauce that this does is it actually executes the HDCP 2.2 handshake, which allows the HDCP activated consoles to actually put a display signal out to your displays, including your capture device. So this Elgato, for whatever reason, um, with just this attached to it, 
is still able to capture uh, that. So before, in the old setup, you would need these additional two components where you would need this HDCP 2.2 .2 to 1.4 down converter as well as this old dumb splitter um, from back in the Xbox 360 days of just, if you used one of these, it would automatically strip out HDCP 1.0, um, but or up to 1.4. So, so, but the new setup is simpler. So yeah, if you don't have multiple components, honestly, it's a one component setup. Get this splitter while it lasts. <laughs> if this thing exists at the time of you watching this video, buy one, even if you don't feel like you need it, because who knows how much longer that's gonna stick around, because right now this is the only one on the market that I have seen that actually works. So, real quickly, oh, and I, I trust me, I have, I have literally in my closet like seven splitters, and this is the one that does HDCP 2.2 uh, as of right now. Um, so the setup is, you take the output from whatever your console is, the HDMI cable, you plug it into the switch or directly into the input of this splitter, depending on what you're setting up. And then you can either run the output from this into the input of this, or again, if you're just hooked up directly here, then the output from this goes into your capture device. Now I'll put up a diagram for this and I'll also link the diagram to the full post on my website, wheezysgaming.com. But you guys can follow that if me just describing it out loud is making your brain hurt a little bit. But yeah, that is all that is necessary. Hook this up and I can just fire up whatever console I want. And let me switch over back to the PS5. Oh, that's the power button, not the switch button. <laughs> switch back to the PS5, scoobity doobity doo, bloop bloop, adjust display area. So it, it noticed that I switched input devices. Um, but yeah, easy peasy, that's all there, that's all there is to it. Um, so again, I will reference, you can see the link to my other video, but just briefly here in case you haven't seen my other video, um, if this doesn't work for your setup, right? So if you have one input device or one input setup, all you need is this. If you wanna use a switch, then these two devices are all you need. If this doesn't work and your capture device won't capture with HDCP active on this, then you need these two additional devices, which I will link below, but again, see my previous video, which I will also link. This is an HDCP 2.2 to 1.4 down converter. And the reason this setup will, as far as I am aware, always work is because this HDCP 2.2 to 1.4 down converter is fully legal. And once a 1.4 signal comes out here, they can't stop the signal. Um, so, Firefly. Uh, anyway, so th these are the two things you need. These are relatively cheap devices. I think they're about 20 bucks each. Um, so it adds up when you put it all together, plus all the HDMI cables. But this is additional components you will need if you really want it to work with basically any setup, set it and forget it. Um, one other thing that I will mention that honestly, even I thought for a while is kind of hokum, is like, does that really matter? It's when you're getting into 4K video, cable quality matters. Now I've, I, you know, I've, I've been on the side of it's like, okay, whatever. I'm not talking about buying gold plated HDMI cables, but I am talking about buying cables that are rated for 4K. Honestly, let's go for 4K 120 hertz. This setup really only supports up to 4K 60 hertz, um, as far as I've tested. Um, it could technically go higher, but I haven't been able to test it because I don't have 120 hertz display. But you do need cables because I have cheaper HDMI cables. I got a bunch of HDMI cables from many, many days of doing this. and. I've used cheap ones and I get video dropouts. So you'll be in the middle of a game and especially at particularly um, demanding graphical sections, you will get video dropouts. Now, I'm going to link along with this, these cables that I found on Amazon, they are not expensive. They are high quality, great cables, and they are cheap. I mean, a short cable that's about six feet, I think costs less than 10 bucks and they have longer ones. So I'm using, this one's a relatively short one. I think it might be a six foot cable. Could even be a three foot cable, honestly. I think the three foot cables are like six or seven bucks. And then this is like a 15 foot cable that's actually running all the way over there to my capture card. Um, but they are not expensive and they are high quality. So if you don't want to check around and have to take a chance of getting bad cables, just get the ones that I linked there because man, I'll tell you, I do not like spending a lot of money on things like cables. Like it feels like, 
I could just be spending money on games, <laughs> better displays, like, so I'm, I did the research, I'm gonna save you the money. Let me, let me show you how much research I'm gonna save you guys on this by, by buying what I bought. Cause how much, how much have I done research on stuff? I've got entire drawer of cables. I've got these fiber optic HDMI cables, which honestly are worth every penny. If you're going to run an HDMI signal uh, over 50 feet to like, a, to like a display in another room, you need a cable like that. It's called like an active HDMI cable. These are fiber optic. So I've tested those because I used to have that set up in my last house. I've got splitters. This is the other splitter that the guy in that video recommended that did not work as far as HDCP bypass. Older splitters, other splitters. And I got other 4K switches. I've guys, guys, I've spent so much money <laughs> on on components and devices trying to get a good setup because I like to have this easy to use um, electronic setup. And I've got a lot of electronics. So if you're like me, you got a lot of electronics. You want it to be easy to use so that you don't have to worry about switching cables and and HDCP on, HDCP off. On the Xbox, if you want to turn HDCP off, you have to hard, you have to go through the menu settings and hard power off the entire Xbox to get it to deactivate HDCP and then turn it back on. So it can be a real pain in the ass. So I've done the work to figure out how to make this easy. And yeah, so that's the, the, the short answer for the HDPC, HDCP bypass stuff. Real briefly, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you guys my full setup because I'm a nerd like that. And if you guys are interested in something like this, you might be interested in my full setup because I really like having the ability to easily use a high-tech set of displays without any issues. So the way that I have my current setup is I have my multiple consoles over here, right? So this switch, I believe, supports up to five, yeah, five by one, five devices which I've moved a lot of my other consoles out to the living room, but you could hook up five devices here in that single switch, Series X, PS5, PS4, Xbox One, hook them all up into that. When you switch that, it goes through here to my KVM switch, and then that KVM switch allows me to toggle back between my PC display, or my console display, and then I click that, and it goes to my PC and this KVM switch is great. Oh, it's asking change the mode. Don't change the mode of the camera. It's not connected anymore. Um, without the the screens all jumping around. For those of you who saw the video that I did on that KVM switch specifically, uh, I'll link it as well in case you're interested in it because it's great. It keeps that video signal active. So even when I toggle back to the console, my PC still thinks that that screen is active. So it doesn't reshuffle all my windows around, which really irritated me. So yeah, so I've got the consoles hooked into that switch so that with this remote, I can say, okay, I got PlayStation, let's go over to Xbox, input two, bloop. And then it'll switch over to input two. Takes a second for it to reconnect all the video stuff. And there you go, there we're on the Xbox. Now I wanna switch over back to use my PC on the main screen. Shamalama ding dong, PC's back on the main screen. I can go about my business. This would work just as well with a television. Matter of fact, I have considered for my setup adding a proper 4K 120 hertz TV in here, which I may still do at some point. Um, and using this setup, I would be able to do that. And in fact, I would be able to run it to this display as well as that display using that split, this splitter here, because I'm only using one output from this splitter. Caveat, it wouldn't run at any higher than 60 hertz because this is not a 120 hertz panel. Anyway, that is good enough <laughs> for uh, what I wanted to show you guys for bypassing HDCP. So that is my 2022 update for bypassing HDCP. Hopefully you guys found that interesting uh, and helpful. If you did, leave me a like. If you didn't, if I just babble too much, then you can you can dislike it, it's okay. If you wanna stick around for helpful tech stuff as well as mostly gaming, then subscribe, become a minion on this channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.